Psalm 21, for the director of music, a Psalm of David. The king rejoices in your strength, Lord. How great is his joy in the victories you give. You have granted him his heart's desire and have not withheld the request of his lips. You came to greet him with rich blessings a pla and placed a crown of pure gold on his head. He asked, for you, he asked you for life and you gave it to him, length of days, forever and ever. Through the victories you gave, his glory is great. You have bestowed on him splendor and majesty. Surely you have granted him unending blessings and made him glad with the joy of your presence. For the king trusts in the Lord. Through the unfailing love of the Most High, he will not be shaken. Your hand will lay hold on all your enemies. Your right hand will seize your foes. When you appear before battle, you will burn them up as in a blazing furnace. The Lord will swallow them up in his wrath, and his fire will consume them. You will destroy their descendants from the earth, their posterity from mankind. Though they plot evil against you and devise wicked schemes, they cannot succeed. You will make them turn their backs when you aim at them with drawn bow. Be exalted in your strength, Lord. We will sing and praise your might. The psalm is like many other. It is a psalm of David. It connects closely with Psalm 20. Psalm 21 is, in a sense, an answer to prayer. It starts with a simple request in Psalm 20, where David was requesting safety, or asking God for safety, for remembrance, and victory. These were the desires of David's heart. These requests were from a king who rejoices in the strength of the Lord. We can see that clearly in verse 1. We can see a grateful and a joyful king. David had many, uh, had many returns to the joy and strength of the Lord. Here we see the joy of, uh, of prayers answered. The joy David has... The joy David has knowing that God is almighty and faithful. God's strength came to David in response to both the desire of his heart and his spoken prayers, which we see in verse 2 as the request of his lips. After this, there's a pause. Selah. Selah is... We take this as an opportunity to praise and reflect, to thank God for his strength, salvation, and for the glorious ways that he has answered prayers. The same is true in our life. As we, every week, take this time to pause and reflect upon God's wonder and glory and majesty and his mercy in our lives. Next we see the reasons for joy in verses 3 to 7. David saw the glory and the goodness of God. God gave him the desires of his heart and God gave him victory. God granted him preservation and safety. David wore the crown of victory as an answer to prayer and his trust in God. David celebrated the answer of prayer for safety in the battle of life and death. David was given length of days. It is clear, it is clear that God has shown and given us and given David more than what he had asked. And God is still capable of giving us more than we can ever ask for. As we read further, we see that God grants us eternal blessings. Blessings that do not fade away. As we continue to pray and ask God, He will remain faithful and make us glad with the joy of His presence. He will continue to bless us with the answers to our prayers. David declared that his trust is in the mercy of God, and it is his will that would persevere in his life. God and his faithfulness would continue to persevere 
and preserve David and bless him in the future. The same is for us, God's people. We must also, like David, trust in the Lord, for he is our Father, even though we encounter struggles and face oppression, as did Israel, God's chosen people. We will not be defeated. Finally, the last two points, the judgment of God that defends his people in verses 8 through 12. We see what God does to his enemies. His hand will find his enemies. David realized that even though he was victorious in battle, God wasn't done finding and judging his enemies. The Lord will swallow them up in his wrath. David showed confidence that God would judge his enemies and that these and that, they, and that he would fight against uh, those who, who fought against Israel and that fought against God. So why were God's enemies deserving of this judgment? We see in verses 11 and 12. They intend evil against us. They intentionally rebel against God and his people, even though their plans are bigger than their ability to perform. They devise evil plots, which they are not able to perform. God will make them run away. They will fear his judgment. David saw this. He saw the enemies of God running away in battle with their backs towards the advancing armies of God. Here, arrows symbolize God's judgment. Judgment that is swift, sure, and deadly. The characteristics that we see of arrows. And in verse 13, we see David praising the God of strength and might. Be exalted, O Lord, in your strength. David worshipped God directly. He exalted the Lord, who has great strength within himself, and never needed to rely on another for strength. The same way we should be as David. We will sing and praise your power. After, direct, after the direct statement of David, where he expressed the determination that he and the people of God would continue to praise him and sing to him. Let us in our daily lives do the same. Let us exalt the Lord. Let us forever sing and praise his holy name when we are able to in all that we do. Thank you and God bless you.